All right, so we're gonna jump over to the Hogvine deck now. And I am playing the original list that, um, that, was, that was posted by Vito. Um, and so this list seems pretty sweet. Um, really impressed with it. He was the one that, uh, or she, I don't really know, uh, posted about this on the Modern Magic uh, subreddit and uh, cross-posted it with the Magic TCG as well. And the list is pretty, I think everyone's basing their list off of this, and I think the, the core of it's pretty much solid. I don't think people are really flexing too much with it. Um, the mana base here, we got three Black Cleaves, two Blood Crypts, four Blood Stains, Marsh Flats, Marsh Flats, two Overgrowns, a Swamp, four Verdants. The four Feeders, four Crawlers, four Stitchers, four Faithless, um, four Insolence, four Blood Gas, four Altars, two Stinkweeds, four Bridge, four Vengevine, four Hogak. This deck is very streamlined to the point where it just wants four of it. wants to hit what it uh, has, and it's just going to go from there. Um, in the side here, we've got three Cabals, two Thought Seas, four Ley Lines, one Shenanigans, three Natures, and two uh, Assassin's Trophy. Now, I know that people have actually gone to the point where they uh, started putting in Wismare to hit Enchantments um, and a couple other variations. We're going to play the original version first, just to play it out and test it out uh, before we start making a pick up any of those other lists um we did pick up their cyborg guide as well and usually we want to keep uh, hands that have two lands with uh, two suppliers a supplier and a feeder a supplier two fetches hogak and uh, a couple c uh uh Converted mana cost one or two creatures, one looting bridge and vine, one neonate, one creature and a vine. So there are a couple of different versions of like these are hands that they would keep, and we're gonna be using that as a baseline because it is my first time piloting the deck. I have gone against it a bunch of times, but we're gonna see how this deck does. So let's switch the, over to it and let's play it and see what we can do. Let's see if we can uh, turn to some people. I like that right there. 1300 players playing modern right now. I love it. What do you think, Caesar? Do you think it's uh, do you think it's busted? Do you think it's uh, gonna be banned? So I believe this falls into what we're looking for here. We've got a Neonate. We've got Bridge. We don't have a Sack Outlet. But I think this hand's pretty solid. We can run out the Neonate and then go into the looting and then be able to pitch like the Bridges. Um, we got to hit a Sack Outlet, but I think this hand could definitely get there. So we're going to keep this. That is very interesting that he thinks that car, that deck should be banned already. Um, I guess I haven't encountered it enough to have that feeling. That's an answer to us, obviously. Okay, how do we want to make them pop that spell bomb? Do we just want to run out blood gas? I think we actually want to try to make them do something here. We want to keep the bridge, but I think if we go for the bridge, they'll they'll go for it. See if they crack it here. Yeah, I just want to play it. I like to play the new decks, and I like to play other decks just so I have a better understanding of them, uh, even if I am stumbling my way through it.
Yeah, we got them to pop it. I figured they would do it for the uh, for the bridge here. Seems good for them. We can faithless now. Alter sweet. So we can. Let's faithless. Pitch the necropolis. And a blood gas. Run out of grave crawler. And we'll pass it over. Yeah, definitely. The deck definitely looks like like a lot of fun. I think there was only like two players that were at were at the IQ that we even saw play the deck because it was just so new that they were gonna have a hard time getting their hands on it. Alright, altar is sweet. Unfortunately, we didn't hit a land, but that's okay. So let's go altar. Target ourselves, sack this grave crawler. And we'll pass it back. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, th I think people just need time to adapt, and once they have, I think we're going to be just fine. Multiple altars is not great. Let's go grave crawler. I'm gonna actually cast this other one too while we can. Smell ourselves some more. All right, next time they can eat the Hogak and the Grave Crawler. We have another one. I'd like to hit a land, actually. I'm not going to mill ourselves anymore. They're just going to be eating it here with the oozes. Should be good. Can't block. See if we can mill ourselves. Sack it, mill ourselves. That's it on this one. So we can only get one. Yeah, we can't. Uh, could only go feeder. We have the necessary exile, but we don't have enough for that. We don't have another creature for it. So and that's gonna be it here. <laughs> yeah. Gotta run all the old Emrakuls. Uh, I mean, all the old Eldrazi. They can't get us if they can't mill us, right? Alright, looks like we want to, uh, against the black green decks here, we want to minus off two Neonates and two Altars. And then we add, want to add in the trophies. And a card they don't have on their side. <laughs> what? 
Oh, that's funny. They ended up taking the Cabal Therapist out of their cyborg um, in the version they wrote the cyborg guide for. So, that's funny. Um... <laughs> Yeah, we did. We did run one uh, Ulamog in our version, so it's pretty good. All right, let's let's bring in the thought seasons. See if we can rip them off of their things. So, yeah, we ran one OG Ulamog. Um, I actually really want to run OG Emrakul. I love OG Emrakul. Um, this hand's not doing much. This hand's got no lands. Solid, solid. Uh, I think we're going to keep this one. Ha! They get nothing. Cool, cool. Discard a Hogak, get a Hogak. Whew, got an ooze. We've got problems, folks. We've got problems. Want to eat the neo ain't they didn't even care inquisition us please oh we're gonna lose this race folks i don't want to alarm you because we're going to swing here, and they'll be able to swing for five, and we're not going to get there, I don't think. Because they can have three eats. So, let's move on to the next one. What's up, Gorbatron? Thanks for joining, man. So this hand's definitely like a beatdown hand. We've got no mill effects with Stitchers. We've got, um, hmm, this hand's pretty slow, pretty slow. But we can go pretty heavy on this beatdown plan with being able to cast the uh, crawlers over and over again. So we'll see if that's good enough. Not comboing out, but uh, yeah, I agree. Looks like we're going to get some bring the light shift. How dare they remand that to our hand? It's 
so rude. We're trying to like cast spells and beat them down, and they're over here like, no, you don't get the. Coiling Oracle. Got a Tribe Elder. Running out the Elder. Sure. Smack that old boy. We're playing against uh, Bring the Light Shift is what it should be. They they usually ramp with Coiling Oracle, Secure Tribe Elder, and Search for Tomorrow. And then they uh, kill us with either Escape Shift or Bring the Light into Escape Shift. They also get to play some like cool utility lands. Um, at the core of it, they are a... Um, blue green deck, but usually they're splashing into two other colors um, to accommodate. And we're gonna see if we can if we can actually mill them. It's actually a pretty big deal because they usually only run eight to ten uh, mountains and like two Valakuts. So, but they are a pretty controlly deck. Oh, uh, they also play like the new uh, the new blue green draw card play a land too. So, and because they can do that instant speed, which is pretty sweet. So they have like the best, like you know, two drop ramp spells, and then they play a couple controlly cards. The deck has been pretty dead. Um, I did play against it the other night when they were playing with uh, Ice Fang Cordal as another, but I didn't feel like that was good enough. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, the deck is more or less fringe now. Nobody really plays it. Yeah, we can see here they're on four colors as well. Got a Neonate. Let's run that out. Remand. Rude. Another remand, rude. All right, that's Valakad. They got the scape shift or the bring the light. There's the coil. Yeah, yeah. There's the bring the light. And escape shift. And we'll make sure they have the mountains in hand. I mean, in play, not that they have another one stuck somewhere and they can't go off. I always feel like when you make a skip shift player actually go through the process, they get like super paranoid. Because <laughs> I know I do. I, I like quadruple count everything. Like, this should kill them. Double check my math. Pull out a calculator. I'm starting doing it again. I'm like, they die, right? Like, they're dead. Like, they're definitely dead. And we're definitely dead. All right, so I think this is technically where the Cabal Therapists come in and the Thought Seizes as well. I want to bring in the trophies here too. Uh, let's trim two Neonates, the Imps as well. Uh, I don't 
they're going to have any kind of guidance for this. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think so. Let's take out two gas. And one bridge. And my thought process here is I just want to rip apart their hand, grind them out a good bit from that, and then I also want to um, assess this trophy in case they, because they run a limited amount of mountains, that there are times where I feel like we're going to be able to get them with blowing up their mountain and they will have the enough mountains to trigger the battle cuts. Mm. We've got no discard outlet. And we have no way to pitch that bridge, so I do not think we can keep this. This hand seems solid. It's also our first time getting a Stitcher. It's also a Cabal. That's sweet. Kind of awkward, because we can't stitch her here now. I think that's fine, because I think we'll just go Faithful Saluting first then. Pitch the bridge, and we'll pitch a Blood Stain. Yeah, you almost always want to wait it out. You want to see if they actually have what they say they have, you know? Bummer, they got rid of our bridge. Well, I feel like the cards we're taking out isn't that big of a deal. Um, we saw there that trying to race them wasn't that effective. are going to name bring to light all right they got one bring to light coiling romance scape shift and search rest in pieces a pretty big below So we've got Scape Shift for a man and Coiling Oracle in hand. Is losing our Cabal Therapist worth it on this next turn? I don't think it is. I think I'd rather keep the Cabal around. Yeah, we didn't hit any combo pieces. Thoughtseize is interesting. If we, because we had Thoughtseize here, if we sacrifice our Cabal, we could hit their Coiling Oracle and then hit their Remand, and just completely leave them with just a Scape Shift and three lands. But then we wouldn't have a clock of any kind. So I think I'm gonna hold off on the Cabal Therapist, sacrifice, and we'll just Thoughtseize them. And let's take them off of the Coiling Oracle. 
That way they don't have a blocker and no ramp. Keep the Vengevine. That's going to be our best clock here. I want to keep the altar as well. So unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to pitch the Hogax, and let's beat them in for one. Another rest in peace, sure. Why not? I think we're at the point where uh, we can wait one turn and then escape shift. No, I think it's risky because if they get a ramp spell, they can escape shift, so. That's cool. All right, so they got one bring the light in hand. And they got the land. Okay, okay, rough for us. We gotta keep digging. Cool. The ball's good. If we can just get past one more turn. No land. That's a tribe elder. That does mean they have to wait till next turn to go off, though. Unless they t rip the escape shift. Oh, they just ripped the escape shift. Okay, so what we're gonna do here <laughs> is we're gonna mill them two cards. Let's see how lucky we can get. That's a supreme verdict. Ah, that's one mountain. <laughs> oh, that was really unfortunate that they also had the scape shift. If we would have got another land there, we would have been able to get that Venge Vine out and start beating. And then we could have um, pushed, uh, pressed it pretty hard too because of that. And they would have uh, they would have been low enough life to where they would have lost. But we just couldn't find that other, um, get that other land.
We were talking about the price of, of Hogak, though. So if you guys haven't seen, like, the price trend of Hogak, it is hilarious. Um, it has, like, been one of the highest ups and downs, I think, in the short, this short of a period. Because, like, it was, like, bulk price. Like, it was, like, two bucks or something like that uh, at the beginning of June. And then over the weekend, last weekend, it, like, spiked up into like the uh, 15 range uh, and then all the way up to 50 range and like that's what people were like listing it for and then like um it like dropped down to 35 you know it was like bulk and then it went to like 10 then it went to like 15 then it went to like 35 all the way up oh this is sweet uh, all the way up to like 50 and then it dropped back down to like 25 and now it's at like uh 15 bucks 10 bucks again so all right let's Start off with a stitcher. And then we'll run out of carrion, sack the supplier, and then looting. I guess we want a looting first. Oh, yeah, definitely looting first. If we go bridge and blood gas, we can go land and then get some triggers going. Yeah. All right, we're gonna sack the supplier. Mill ourselves, get a two-two. Get a 1-1. One, one. Alrighty. Now let's sack our blood gas. Didn't hit any Hogax to cast. But I think that's fine for what we got. And we'll pass it over. devoted Stinkweed Imp. So we can flashback Faithless Looting, pitch the Imp and the Vine, and that's probably all we're going to be able to go this turn, which doesn't seem great, but I think that's still our best line here. If we would have hit some, like, more combo pieces, yeah, but um, we didn't, so now we can kill them on our turn, our next turn, but if they have the combo here, they are probably just going to win. I feel like if they had it, they would have just dropped it. Oh, they're digging for it. That's a pretty art. There's the Vizier. So they have a combo. Do they have a payoff?
super exciting stuff, eh? I feel like they're the slowest tap and untappers we have ever gone against. If they're trying to bore me to death, it might work. With how fast they're going, yeah, we might win by how themselves timing out. <laughs> All right, there is the finale. That's going to pump their entire team, right? Creatures you control get plus 10 plus... Yeah, so that is it. Alrighty, I think the only thing I really care about bringing in here are the Thought Seizes. And I'm going to take out the Stinkweeds, and I think we're just going to run it like this. Just in case we need to rip a card out of their hand turn one, great. If not, I don't care. We're just going for the combo. Solid hand, we're gonna keep it. We'll start off with the stitchers, mill ourselves. I think before we go into the uh We could thought seize turn one if because they're mulliganing down to six here. If they kept the hand with like without a ramp spell, that might be worth it. Um, and then next turn, we can go for it. I don't know. If we go Faithless, that's also, like, not bad, because we can pitch the Venge Mine and the Blood Gas. Drop I think we just want to um, ramp ourselves as much as possible here. I mean, uh, get as much going as much as fa as possible. So we're just going to go off with this, the, the Stitcher here. Thank you so much, man. Have a good night. And thanks for jo uh, joining us. Faithless looting. Pitch the bridge and the vine. Shock ourselves and let's thought seize them. Uh, we're definitely going to take this rest in peace. And we're going to pass it over to them. <laughs> Another one drop of any kind would be great. Because then we can uh, cast the blood gas. We got an ooze. Sure. It's bridge. All right. Well, I think our best bet's gonna go blood gas. They didn't respond, so we can go Hogak now. Mm 
We're gonna hit the bridge because we're gonna trigger both our venge vines. They can only get one. We should have ran out the Verdant first, actually, because then we wouldn't have to had exile our bridge. Yeah, this deck is stupid. They do have the combo in hand, but they don't have a payoff, as far as we know. Devoted. Played a force, which means they have a Vizier and Verdant in hand. It's fine with us. Let's go Neonate. anything. That's odd. Ooh, we should have waited until t phase two to cast the blood gas, right? Because then we could have brought it back. It's a mistake there. I'm surprised they're not doing the free block on the stitcher. So two, two. This is odd. I feel like they could have ate the uh, the neonate or the blood gas or the bridge. There would have all been relevant. They just decided to eat nothing. Like even at the end of the turn, they decided to eat nothing. All right, that's the verdant. They got one unknown in hand. See if they have the kind of combo. If we responded with the uh, cracking of the verdant to go get it, it wouldn't matter. They have infinite mana, so. Sure, you gotta give her runes. All 
Battle in opponent. You're at five. What do you got for us? Like they can soak this up. Three. Chump, chump, chump. Still dead, right? Because they're going to take four no matter what there, and then another three for the trample. Do they have nothing else to eat? Yeah. Technically, I guess they could have killed their own... No, they couldn't even kill their own devoted. I was thinking they could have killed their own devoted druid in order to um, uh, eat it, but they can't even add a counter on it to kill it, so obviously... Next got a pretty sweet beatdown plan. We've got a sack outlet, we've got a neonate. We're technically missing another part of the combo piece, but we also got a thought seize. Um, so I think this is, I'm, I'm willing to keep this because we can rip their hand apart a bit and then see if we can get there um, by see if we can just draw another piece. So. See what they're working with. They got a finale and an incubation. Well, if we don't take the finale, they get to do it in two turns. This, yeah. We'll let them just find one thing at a chance over the finale. So pass that over. I like this card a lot. Not oh, Dispatcher. Not bad. Not bad for them at all. Now they can start digging for it. What are, what are your thoughts on the deck so far, Imp? Do you think it's bannable? run out the altar and then next turn we're gonna just be digging really hard Ah, <laughs> uh, how tragic. Alright, well, we're just ditching these. I guess we'll play another altar and pass it over. fortunate that they're just finding birds and mana dorks in general. Mm. 
Oh, they just wanted to flip. Interesting. What up, Epoch? Thanks for joining, man. I guess they just want another recruiter, but... Hmm. Now they got an ooze. That's pretty bad for us. That's a Hogak we can't really cast. Can Neonate... Discard the Hogak, see what we find. We find a whole lot of nothing. Let's... So we're like actually just dead if we don't uh, hit something here, right? And I don't know, even know what we can hit. Because we don't have anything on board. Let's up and find another Neonate. And we're not... Maybe I should have just held up the Neonate and pass and just blocked and sack. This is not Tron. We're trying to figure out this whole deck set because I want to understand it better. We played, we played uh, the Karn Father, and don't you worry, this league's going, this league's going over real fast. So we'll be playing one more league of the Karn Father here in just a bit, because uh, we are getting through these leagues pretty fast. Yeah, that was uh, that was definitely a misplay. I think I should have just cast the Neonate, play the tap plan, pass opponent swings, we block, sack it. And then we would have been able to give ourselves an extra turn. But we were drawing a lot of lands there. I moon like other decks all the time, you know, like um, Tron. And then there's like green white Tron. There's, uh, there's green red Tron. Um, Eldrazi Tron. Uh, and then I move on to other, you know, decks that try to generate a lot of mana, like Scape Shift, you know. I'm, I'm very, very flexible in my options. Um, this deck seems like we're missing a sack outlet or a discard outlet, but let's see if this works out. Oh, we should have ran out the Verdant. If we would have gone Verdant, crack it, play the Stitcher's Mill 3, then uh, play Blood Gas, um, we, I think we would have been able to cast Hogak. I think we can cast Hogak turn 3 here, but we might have been able to do it turn 2. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Karn, a.k.a. the Allfather, a.k.a. Odin, a.k.a. the Full Metal Alchemist, a.k.a. MF Doom, a.k.a. Gigantor. Yeah. And you also get them in different varieties, you know, business, uh, business Karn and casual Karn, whether or not you want him with pants or not. Ooh, path. Are they kind of surgical us right now? That's so rude. Men's Warehouse, Karn. I gotta give him more credit than Men's Warehouse, man. All right, 
right, so next turn we can crack this Verdant, cast the Blood Gas, and then cast this Hogak. Now that should be a pretty good board for our opponent to deal with. That Carrion Feeder being in the graveyard is a little tragic. We would have loved to have that in hand. Ooh, this is Esper. This is Esper Shadow, maybe? I like that deck a lot. I don't think it's good, but I like the idea of the deck. This definitely feels like that Esper Shadow deck. Do we get to go, opponent? I know you want to stop on all the upkeeps, but uh, you gotta actually do something. Alright, crack that. Do we care? Yeah, I want to cast both blood gas. I'm a savage. <laughs> We're still casting seven drops on turn three, folks. How are they going to deal with this 8 8? What are they going to do? <laughs> That seems like a good answer. <laughs> mm, okay. So we swing out. We get to go block, block, block. They take four, and then we're in a pretty bad spot. So let's go... Is he a zombie? No, he's an avatar. Swing, swing, swing. Yeah, well, they would have gone to one. But then we would have died. All right, I can block one nine nine. Oh, we lose. They're gonna bin anything. It doesn't really matter. And then they get to tap Jace again, cast the path on our Hogak, and then we die. We just die to what they have on board. Like, they just flip that, get a path, and kill us. I'm just waiting for them to do it. They don't actually even need to. They can just swing with the shadows. We can only block with one creature. <laughs> oh, man. Sure. Sure. They just get to cast Efri. Not a big deal. Alright, is there anything we really want to bring in? Um, the original guy did recommend bringing in the Nature's Claim, I, I believe, against the Shadow deck. So I said trim the Neonates, one Neonate, and the two Stinkweeds, and then bring in the Claims. What are we claiming, though? 
Like, they're not bringing... They're not doing anything, right? Like, what if... I feel like that's weird. Right? Like... Why... Why are they bringing in claim? Like, Shadow doesn't have anything for us to hit to make them gain life. Oh, I guess they're 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 going to be bringing in ley lines. Yeah. Okay. Maybe against Grixis next Shadow they're bringing in ley lines. So I guess this one they might be bringing in rest in pieces. We've got no lands. We got to ship this. Well, we've got a Stitcher into a claim, I guess. I will gladly take a looting. Yeah, there's a ley line. I really want that looting though. So I'm just gonna pass. They're going to Inquisition us. We've got to give up our... Our looting's gone, folks. Our looting's gone. So those are Stitcher. We've just got a Hogak in play. I mean, in hand. No, we can't cast. But at least we've got this altar. Yeah, it really was all lazy. We can path you, we can just swing, we can Teferi bounce and kill you. No big deal. No big deal. Uh, opponent, we've got another altar, so... Kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. We don't want to alarm you, but... We've got no creatures to sack and nothing to do with. Guess now. So technically, we can sack it, crack the fetch, sack it again. But I think we're gonna wait till their uh, end of their turn to do all that. Sure, you got Teferi. Sure. ourselves again. We might not be able to cast that Hogak. Let's wait one turn. Neonate's a bit of a bummer. We can't cast Hogak off of that. Let's run it out. And let's discard this Hogak. Alrighty. I guess we'll hit Teferi. <clears throat> oh, that's pretty sweet. So, land. Always yes. Mill ourselves. Crack this fetch. Get a land. 
We are gonna shock ourselves just in case we hit those feeders later on. Get the blood gas. Cast the hogak. Get rid of that, 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 that. Get our we're doing it, folks! Alright, let's mill ourselves. There's the grave crawler. Dope. We're gonna cast Hogak again. Get rid of these lands. Sack ourselves again, sacrifice the Hogak. Another bridge is sweet. Cast the Hogak. Yeah, opponent conceded. So we'll, we were just going to keep uh, doing that, generating a bunch of tokens. We were starting to get two tokens. Eventually, we would have got three apiece per sack. And then after that, we just go for the milling of them. So we got to do the combo. Got a sack outlet, we've got a couple draw outlets, we've got the nature's claim as well. This seems sweet. Ley line, sure. So if they don't have a turn one, they don't. Yes. Alright, we're just gonna run out the blood stain here. Because we're we have 100 percent um, plans on cracking it and nature's claiming them. Oh, do they have the stub? They are down to one card, though. Like, what are the odds? They're literally just waiting on, uh... Not being low enough to just drop a shadow. <laughs> I think if that's the case, they would just been pinging themselves, right? With the silent cleaning? Clearing? Get two other two other claims. We also just need to get a green land. As soon as we get another green land, we can actually just cast this Venge and start beating in with it.
Bounce Heifery. <gasps> they should bounce their own ley line. Do it, opponent. <laughs> Um, Lasak. Discard the bridge. <laughs> Ooh, martial arts. That means that's an overgrown. Yes, I will take that. Get an old Benjamin. We're just gonna beat at them. That way, if they have to tap this, this would be lethal next swing. So we don't want to cast that yet. They could uh, we're all be keeping them alive from it. Snap. Go to one. Okay. We're going to hold the Blood Crypt in hand in case we want to discard it. They conceded. We just got our first win. And we got to do the combo. So sweet. All right, one more, and then we'll jump back on Tron for the last league for the evening. So. So, oh, if you guys aren't aware, I'm a pretty big uh, tabletop player. Um, the Pathfinder 2 uh, PDF prices and release date along with the hardcover books just got announced recently so i'm like really excited for that uh big pathfinder player so when that comes out we'll definitely be getting a game together uh with my friends and they always make me gm so i'll be gming and uh doing that so really excited gotta start working on my uh storyline i think uh, what i want to do my last major campaign ran for like two and a half years and like every session we were playing like eight hours plus so i'm excited to like get back into that supplier and one discard outlet I think this is good Let's see if we can make this work we need to get a sack outlet going to get really powerful but see if we can do it it's kind of cool because we can go stitcher into stitcher um, and then cast Hogak so that's pretty sweet I 
are just sweet. Alrighty. So we have the option of going Neonate here, discard Vengevine, and then cast Stitcher, trigger, cast the Vengevine, and then smash in. I think that's where we want to be in life. Surgical, sure. It's a bummer because we have another one in hand. All these main deck surgicals. I don't know what they're pausing on. Do we got another surgical or something? Hmm. That's unfortunate. I don't really want to lose out on the grave crawler here. Or the Vengevine or the Imp. I might wait a turn as a result. Let's just swing in. Because if we don't do that, next turn we can go Hogak and uh, Gravecrawler, which will let us bring back the other Vengevine. So. If they do flip that thing, I'm not even, like, are we even really that mad? Because we get to recast both Stitchers and mill ourselves some more. They hit us for seven, we would go to eight, and then we try to go off again. We still really need to hit like a sack outlet. Okay, that's gonna be pretty strong for them. Do that, flip thing in the ice, get to hit surgical and serum. Finale so strong. And they're gonna hit our Vengevine too. Man. I am glad we didn't uh, cast Hogak though, because that would have got pushed back right in our hand as well. So now we can go Stitcher into Stitcher, cast the Hogak, get the Grave Crawl back from our graveyard. After we dredge with Stinkweed. I think that's fine. Only question is if it's good enough. So We can't cobble off anymore. Because Bridge is gone. I am definitely clicking back something I was not supposed to. I was supposed to cast the Hogak. Really good, we cancel that.
almost spawned to there. Looting. Pitch the stinkweed and the blood gas. Go land. Trigger our sti our blood gas. Do we want to faithless again here? Or do we want to run out carrion and a grave crawler? We could looting again, but I'm not sure we're going to be hitting anything too relevant. We would be able to dredge a bunch. We wouldn't be able to get blood gas back, and that's the thing I care about the most. Yeah. I think we're good to just swing. Oh, I guess no. We could have uh, just cast the feeder just to start uh, sacking our board. But let's get a swing in first. Good, took care of one big threat. Throw this out. I think we're just gonna pass. Just swinging. They got a flip. Yeah, looks like they're flipping thing. Triple Thoughts Gower. Oh my gosh, I was supposed to click Sacrifice. So we were supposed to definitely sack the Stitchers and the Blood Gas there to the feeder. So that was pretty bad. supposed to be at. I guess it's not really... It might, it might not have been corrected, I guess. Blood gas, I definitely think we should have sacked, because we can just bring it all back with um, the cracking of the marsh flats, but...
one bird. Let's just hope they're not flipping another one. Because that would be game. Do they have a free spell? I don't think we can mill ourselves anymore, by the way. We're down to five cards. if we have a land left let's see blood stain blood. Oh, one overgrown there's the other overgrown do they have the other swamp I don't see the swamp okay which means we should be good the swamp. Land. Yes, 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 always. Yeah, got a game in. All right, so against this, I'm pretty sure we just want to bring in the ley lines, right? Hmm, they actually said just minus the two imps and bring in the two necrotic wounds. I'm gonna minus the two imps and two neonates, and I want to bring in all four ley lines. Double ley line, I guess. We can start just piling on the feeders. It's basically a mold of six, right? We can discard the Hogak. Draw another one. <laughs> Can't quite cast it yet. 
Oh, they're gonna surgical it. That's really tragic that we drew the other one. We actually can't block with either of these creatures, so that's it for this one. Okay. I think this is a keeper. We've got the ley line, we've got double, um, double venge vines. We can get rid of them with this looting. Or we can pitch the bridge. I think we're gonna be pitching the venge vines here. Cause we can pitch the bridge with this neonate. We would like to hit another creature to trigger it, but we might have to Faithless again, just to dig a little bit harder, find the other land on the creature. Feeder is good, we just need a land now. Let's go Faithless. Okay. Still need to just hit a land. Hit a land, we can do some stupid stuff. Surgical. Oh, they're gonna ravenous trap us. How rude. All right. Well, hmm. Do we want the blood gas back? I think we do. So let's just respond to this. our venge vines and we lose our bridges pretty big tragedy but what else what can you do alrighty now let's go neonate and we'll go feeder and let's just pass it over That was a big bummer. We would have got those Vengevines back and got some good beats in, but we're just not that cool. We still got three bridges and two Vengevines in the deck though, so we're not in terrible shape.
Aria Flame. My friend is on Storm, and he was really impressed with this card. So, Let's see if it kills us. Might not be able to do that other league. This this last game is taking a lot longer than I gave it credit for. Because we're approaching 10 o'clock already. Stitcher. Let's run that out there. Okay, sack the stitcher, hit a bench line, sweet. Oh, another surgical. How incredibly rude. I'm still gonna sack this one. And let's go for the beats. So anybody who doesn't know what Aria Flame does, it's uh, when it comes to play, your opponent gains 10 life, but then for each spell you cast, you get to add a counter onto Aria Flame, and then for every counter on it, your opponent gets dealt that much damage um, to a target player or planeswalker. So it takes to the fourth spell to get back to where they were, but then it deals five and then six after that. So you can just start like casting your cantrips and start going crazy and dealing damage. Like what they're doing. Storm obviously has an easier time killing with this because they have the rituals, but Mana Morphos does a really good job of it, obviously. So does the lootings and all the other single cantrips they have, like here. So, so they're back to the normal point. Two cards left, another looting. So we're down to nine. They're gonna lose two cards. They have one card left. They'll put us down to three. Unless they can trip into a zero drop, and then they win. Unless it's a bolt. Alright, bolt kills us. I feel like they would have killed us though, so... Okay. I guess we win. <laughs> uh, it's funny. All right. Well, that was it. I think I am going to call it a night. It is just a couple minutes before, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before 10 o'clock. So going to call it. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining tonight. Um, if you have variations of Tron that you guys want to see, you want to see get played, just let me know. More than happy to try any of it out. Um, I might be playing the Escape Shift with... Um, the Karn package to try that out to see how good that is and then a couple I have a couple different versions of Etron that I've been kicking around so we might play the colorless Eldrazi version and then play the um, regular Eldrazi Tron as well so thank you so much everybody have a great night we'll see you all next week Sunday